Welcome to Border Crossings. My name is Larry London. Today, we are joined by two-time Grammy winner, Kimbra. In 2012, Kimbra joined Gautier on the year's biggest hit, Somebody That I Used to Know. And since that time, she's been working and wowing fans around the globe. Influenced by the vocals of Minnie Ripperton and the writing of Jeff Buckley, Kimbra is on tour in support of her third new seat. Hi, I'm Larry London. Welcome to Border Crossings. In our studio, we're happy to have her back here in Washington and on The Voice of America. Kimber has been on the road promoting a brand new album, which is called Primal Heart Reimagined. We welcome you to The Voice of America. Thank you so much. So it's reimagined. Explain what that means exactly. Right. Well, I chose four songs off Primal Heart, so it's just a small collection, an EP, I guess you could say. Um, I wanted to give fans a different insight into the songs, a, a different way of hearing them. And I brought my friends, both of who are here today, Zach and Spencer, onto the album. Uh, we went into Red Bull Music Studios, had a wonderful Norwegian producer called Lars Hundvet reimagine the songs and produce the records so that I could step into the studio just as a singer, you know, and without all the craziness of all the technology I usually surround myself in and um, strip these songs right back um, almost kind of like an old jazz record or something so it was really liberating for all of us and now I'm taking it on tour so mm -hmm. it's a new way for people to hear the songs live too. Well, listening to you do the sound check I'm very excited to hear, hear you perform here Thank in you. our studios because your voice sounds great. You Thank sound you. Wonderful. And I know that you were inspired by jazz music kind of at an early age, uh, and you did a Nina Simone song. That's at right. One point. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I covered Nina on my very first album, Vows. Uh, I think jazz has always felt like a very free art form, you know, mm -hmm. just even the vision of jazz um, aside from the vocalists. But yeah, I'd say like Billie Holiday for sure mm -hmm. and Sarah Vaughan are definitely vocalists that to me, always use their voice as an instrument, you know, more like a trumpet rather mm -hmm. than thinking a singer as such, mm -hmm. you know. And how does Snoop Dogg fit into that? Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> Snoop is an amazing rapper, and I think rap a lot of the time can be very jazz mindset too, mm -hmm. you know, when you look at artists like Kendrick Lamar or something, you know, he's taking so much from um, great jazz minds. Um, I think, yeah, Snoop is one of the, like, greatest legendary rappers, and when I heard that he was into my song, it was just a no-brainer to have him mm -hmm. um, jump on it as well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's very different, but to <laughs> me it's somehow related. <laughs> did he come into the studio to cut the song, or did you do it no, from we did different it from, places? Yeah, from a distance. We mm -hmm. haven't yet met face-to-face, -face, but obviously we've, you know, talked a little during the making of mm -hmm. the, the final version, but it was cool to, again, reimagine that song in a different, more hip-hop context, mm -hmm. yeah. Was this always the destiny for you, music? I mean, you grew up with parents who were doctors and a nurse and mm -hmm. in the medical profession, and you ended up in, in music. So were you dreaming about this as a kid or no? I, I was. I mean, it was always a language that came really easily to me and was my sort of form of expression. I remember getting home from school, being so excited to write a new song with a, a new jazz chord I'd learned on the guitar or something. Um, in terms of, you know, becoming a pop star or something like this, I don't think <laughs> New Zealanders, we, uh, we're different to Americans where we don't necessarily dream in those ways. Sometimes we see ourselves so far away from the rest of the world that I think we are always take it as a surprise if anyone is interested in us on a global, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when I was offered a, you know, a contract at 17, I'd, I'd say I was still pretty surprised, you know. And um, But I figured, man, why don't I just take this opportunity and go for it? It is the thing that makes my soul sing. Mm -hmm. And it clearly makes a difference in other people's lives. Mm -hmm. So it seemed to fit the criteria of what I wanted to do with my life. And I read when you were 10, you sang the New Zealand National Anthem in, in a rugby stadium filled with people. Uh, that must have yeah, been... I did a few of those things, yeah. <laughs> wow. It was crazy. There was one in particular that was an All Blacks game with 27,000 people when I was mm. quite young. So I think having some of those experiences made, you know, the whole fanfare of um, being a singer a bit easier because I'd had some kind of good... Uh, baby steps into it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're back for Woo. the second time here on The Voice of America, and we're excited to hear the new sounds. So uh, if you wouldn't mind singing a song, Kimber, we'd love to hear something. Yeah. We're going to play a song that is on Primal Heart Reimagined. It's called The Good War. Stones through the mesh 
this we sow But so sown to the flesh I had to dream in monochrome The lie that they spun I think I hear heaven calling me home The light pours from the sun Two lives later I'll find Everybody's gone around here Raise arms, ain't got a hand to call mine I'm still out to find my peace of mind Lovely, lovely. Oh, They're cheering around the world right now. <laughs> you sound great. Thank Kimbra's you. our guest. Primal Heart Reimagined. And so I read that it's a very intimate album. This feels more intimate to you, this yeah. particular album. Yeah, even just the simplicity of there being no um, doubled vocals, you know. If there's mm -hmm. ever a harmony on the song, it's by one other singer who's in the room. And most of this EP was played live, you know. So all the musicians just feeling the tempo, no drum beats, no, you know, electronics. Um, it's scary, especially for a vocalist, because everything is exposed. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm enjoying stepping into that space. Mm -hmm. Did you write a lot of the music on the, uh, on the Yeah, EP? so it's all uh, my original material. Everything, that you wrote them all. Yeah, so it, it's songs off Primal Heart, which, mm -hmm. of course, was original music. Um, but I'd say these arrangements are um, definitely 
they're different. You know, mm-hmm. there's different chords underneath certain things, and that was the influence of Lars Hundvedt, the producer who helped kind of rearrange the the harmonies of things as well. Mm-hmm. So perhaps the chorus lands on a different chord than what you're used to. And I think, yeah, again, that makes um, the song feel different emotionally. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> well, you've been, you know, as I said, doing this for a bit. Uh, 2012 was a big year for yeah. you and your career. You've won a couple Grammys, a couple of Australian Recording Industry Association Awards. How did that change who you are, or did it change who you are? I mean, winning Grammys at an early stage in your career is kind of, that's a big impact. That's a big mind-blowing experience. Of course, yeah. I mean, in terms of my creative trajectory, I don't know if it sort of changed um, where I was going with my music because I've always had a pretty strong vision for for that and, and because I'd made an entire um, debut album even before the, the Grammys came along. So kind of had a sense of where I was going, but it opens these opportunities that were never possible before. Mm-hmm. You know, you may have wild dreams for your s- sophomore album, but the resources may be, you know, so low that you can't execute that. But being at a point in my career where most people knew my name off the top of it, you know, it gave me that chance to bring in musicians um who, you know, really respected my work from the outset and bring them into the studio to make uh, records with them. So I think from that standpoint, it, it gave me a lot of access to the industry um, and that changes the course of things. Um, but in terms of what's in here and the music that I was making since I've been so young, I don't think awards really change that. You mm. know, you're still always on the the, 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 the direction that mm-hmm. you're going because my spirit is writing these songs. You know, it always right. comes from a very internal, um, personal place. Mm-hmm. Because the song with Gautier is different from what you do. Yeah, your, I think it is. Your yeah. R&B jazz style, very yeah. different than the mainstream pop. Somebody that I used to know is kind of a different sound. Yeah, So I was yeah. wondering if, you know, obviously you did that. Right. And it worked out very well for you. But if that made it harder for you to return to your roots. Well, I think that was the beauty of having vows already made and mm. released, you know, in the um, Australia, New Zealand, and of course um, in America, because yeah, the style, the aesthetic of my live band and everything, it is different, but mm-hmm. we've built a fan base off of that sound and um, somebody I used to know kind of fits into into that, but it's nice to know that we have people following the music regardless of that track, who are just there for the sound. Um, from day one, you know, mm. so yeah, it's been a pretty crazy journey. <laughs> Any chance you and Gautier would come back and do another song together? Or I think he's disappeared from music for a bit. Oh, he's making a new album. Oh, is yeah, he? yeah, oh. he just takes his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're still very good friends. Um, in terms of like, yeah, trying to recreate that moment again, yeah, you have I don't the chemistry know. Chemistry for sure. Yeah, we have the chemistry, <laughs> but you know, there's so many variables that come into play for a right, song to be right. that massive. I don't think it's the kind of thing you can ever plan again. <laughs> so. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. (laughs) Would you do another song off the new album? Yeah, absolutely. So this next song is called Everybody Knows. to the bone, hands to the heart, body 
Great. Thank you. Man. I was so into it. Awesome. <laughs> wow, that's great. Kimber's our guest here. Primal Heart Reimagined is the name of the new EP. And so how's the tour going? It's going great. Yeah, we're all a bit tired, but um, we've had a lot of really um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful shows. Um, San Francisco, three nights sold out, wow. things like that, which were just such a surprise to all of great. us. Thank you. And DC tonight, which is awesome. Sold out. I mean, everywhere you go, <laughs> because you're an international star. And uh, you've sold millions of records all around the world. So performing in, in the festivals that you've done, like Rock and Rio and things like yeah. that, when you're playing for a giant crowd or you play a smaller venue, do you have a preference? I always like to ask an artist that because, it, you know, you can get more intimate, but it's always fun to play the gigantic crowd, too. For sure, yeah. No, there is something very kind of primal and exciting about feeling the collective of 20,000 people or <laughs> right. something, yeah. But mm, I'd say for preference, just because I do enjoy dynamics so much, the idea of bringing things so quiet and then really, like, getting quite aggressive with crowds and surprise people you know mm -hmm. um, I'd say a small intimate venue of about six five six hundred mm -hmm. or even smaller you know is is a really nice room to play to mm -hmm. you just get um, the ability to go wild if you want but also to, to get very um, close mm -hmm. and intimate yeah yeah so do you have fa favorite places you like to go because you have truly I mean you you lived, you're born and raised in New Zealand yeah. then you moved to Australia I yeah. think you're living in New York now I'm not That's sure right, yeah. so you're quite international <laughs> has that impacted your music and yeah moving to new cities gives you that ability to kind of wipe the slate clean and just decide mm -hmm. you know wh what am i going to take from this place and, mm -hmm. and filter it through what i do mm -hmm. um so yeah it has inspired me and influenced me and i'd like to keep that uh ritual up if I can but then I am quite in love with New York at the moment so I don't want to run away too soon <laughs> have you written a song about a place you've been has, has any music come from uh, yeah Trippin? I mean I've written a song called Carolina uh, that was on the Golden Echo and that's uh, more about a kind of idealism of what mm. I think you know 
perhaps the suburban life of North Carolina and everything that, that you know, <laughs> it, I think I write a lot about my surrealist ideas of a place mm-hmm. and what they sort of symbolize as opposed to like the, the tangible um, city itself. Mm-hmm. Um, but we'll see. I'm sure I'll write. <laughs> about cities in yeah, the right future. about Washington, D.C. Maybe, you know, maybe, <laughs> yeah. Three hours sleep in D.C. There's a song. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> so how about favorite places you like to perform around the world? Yeah, let's see. Um, and is there a place you haven't been yet you'd like to go? You know, I've never been to India, and I actually do have friends that have gone and played, like, jazz festivals out there, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, that would be just such a trip to see how people consume music out there. Um I've been lucky to go so many places. I think we're all pretty excited to go to South America soon. And I I know that the crowds there just have some sort of, you know, energy to them, the passion of, of, yeah, it is. (laughs) And I think that's always really rewarding. Now, you mentioned people in general are different from New Zealand to America. How are the crowds compared if you're performing in New Zealand back home or in Australia and America? Yeah, I mean... New Zealand crowds um, are great listeners and they're very into music. And, you know, we don't get as much as America when it comes to Mm -hmm. uh, international bands. So um, they're great crowds and especially for me to go back to my homeland and perform. It's quite an exciting Mm -hmm. feeling. Um, But, yeah, I'd say we just maybe on the quieter side when it comes to, you know, heckling and getting out (laughs) there. That's a very kind of American way of, yeah. yeah. (laughs) So there's always differences culturally and just Mm -hmm. the way a crowd engages you. Right. Um, um, the Japanese, for example, are very quiet when they listen to things, and that's just the way they, they listen, you right, know, right. and it's beautiful to see how different people um, engage with art. Mm-hmm. We have a beautiful voice, and I love the vibe and the sound on the new uh, EP. Wow. Well, that's great. Thank you for making time to come in for us. Kimber is here, Primal Heart Reimagined. So if you wouldn't mind doing one more song. Yeah, we'll finish with, a, with a, one of our favorites to play live. It's uh, called Past Love. I don't feel the same, I took all I could take Hey Rapture, won't you find me now? I said I didn't mind while you stripped on my pride Cause good love, good love was mine Broken wings, bones of coal I used to live clinging to his elbows, yeah Though I tried to shake the light Inside the sheen of every faint glow mm-hmm. Past love, come back to yourself Don't keep reaching out to him He can't help you now It's a past lie, so come back to the time It's been far too many nights And you're still crying I woke in early morning I was feeling something's wrong
Cause he can't help you now It's a past life So come back to the time It's been far too many nights And you're still crying Woof, girl can sing. Whoa. <laughs> nice. You. Wow. Lovely. Lovely. Lo you get, people can get lost in your music. It's very okay. easy to just kind of, you know, beautiful Appreciate lyrics, that. beautiful Thank sound. You. you have awesome. a great voice, and, and you guys sound great too. You know? They are amazing. Yes. So happy to have you back here for our second chat together, and congratulations on the success of Primal Heart and the new EP, Primal Heart Reimagined. People want to get a copy of it, your website, Amazon, right. iTunes, everywhere. That's right. What's your website? Kimbermusic.com. Kimbermusic.com. And are you active on Facebook and Twitter yeah, and Instagram yeah, all and all the, that stuff? All the platforms, yep. People want to reach out to you. Well, yeah. congratulations on all the success. Thank you so much. It's great to have you back. Kimber is our guest, and it is uh, for her new EP, which is Primal Heart Reimagined. My name is Larry London, and you're tuned to Border Crossings.